Good day, uh, this is Sean Abarintas of the EC132. Introduction to analog IC design of the EC42FA1 section. Now I'm here to show you the simulation of our schematic diagram based from what we have found in uh, in an article in the IEEE. So uh, what we have found here is the operational transconductance amplifier. Okay. So um, in this article we have found this schematic diagram. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there. Uh, as you can see, the symbols of the PMOS and NMOS are different as from what we are using in the Tanner Edda, but uh, we have asked our professor if we can still use um, or is it similar from what we are using from Tanner Eda and he said that it's just different from the symbol but the function of the transistor uh, would uh, still be the same so uh, we, we just use the same PMOS and NMOS devices in Tanner Eda and um, as we have inter as we have interpreted uh, um, this symbol here um, from what the from what our conventional conventional no knowledge of what uh, PMOS is is that the arrow is inwards but in this symbol um, the PMOS is the PMOS has its arrow outwards, but it still has the bubble, so you will know it is the PMOS device. And here, uh, the NMOS is NMOS arrow is going in inward. So there. Um, okay, so I'll show you our um, final schematic diagram from Tanner Edda's edit. Okay, so here, um, as you can see, we we have here ten. CMOS devices for PMOS and six NMOS devices. Um, and <clears throat> one important factor in um, doing this schematic diagram is the transistor sizing, as it will affect the performance of the whole um, circuit. So here um, we have assigned that. The width of the PMOS is 2.2 micrometer and the length will be 0.4 micrometer PMOS while has the NMOS the has width of or the NMOS devices has the width of 1 micrometer and the length of 0.4 micrometers. So there. Um, this part is the non-inverting input of the amplifier. So we have connected it to the ground while here in the non-inverting input, um, we have an input of a uh, five or ten volt peak-to-peak -peak, um, voltage source with a frequency of 100 kilohertz and a DC, DC offset voltage of five volts. So you'll see later the effect of that DC offset voltage. Um, we have here a uh, five volts volt uh, five volts VDD and a negative 5 volts VSS and uh, we have here the 500 nano ampere current source as the operational transconductance amplifier needs to be uh, or needs an additional con current to control the amp Fires transconductance. So this is the purpose why we have a current source here. And uh, oh, um, so I apologize for the error. So lastly, uh, we have put here some <coughs> print voltage um, blocks. So we will see in the output we form the uh, input voltage waveform and the output voltage waveform okay so um okay, so we're ready to simulate this schematic diagram so we can generate the uh, netlist
Pero, um, sorry for it's taking too long. Um, anyway, uh, the uh, waveform of the output and the input should look like this. So we will see if it will look like exactly this um, waveforms. Okay, so there we have generated the netlist then we go to wedit to see the waveform and there you go uh, uh, exactly as what this picture shows um, we have and input of a 10 volt peak to peak uh, voltage source and an output of a 5 volt uh, DC um, the effect of the DC offset voltage is that in the waveform it will start from 5 volts rather than 0 volts so there uh, after this uh, we will show you uh, how to how to show the generated waveform in the generated netlist in the layout of the operational transconductance amplifier. So, thank you for listening. And Today, I'm Gerald Villacardos and I'll show you the output waveform ng next track ng netlist sa ating layout. So, gumamit kami ng L-Edit version 7.12 or student version because we cannot find any extractor sa version 14 ng L-Edit. So, hindi na rin namin may papakita sa inyo yung layout using L-Edit version 7.12 because meron siyang problema sa resolution ay nagka-crash siya pag nagre-record. So, we will just show you the netlist in T-SPICE, the unmodified one. So, and here, after the extraction, makikita natin na na-extract na siya gamit ng student version. This one. So, sa so definition file, na gumamit tayo ng Morbin20. Ito siya, include Morbin20.md. Then, hindi din natin nilagyan or nileg, nileg, inassign as zero natin yung mga area fringe capacitance. So, mga other internal parameters ng ating CMOS circuit. So, ang pinaka-importante talaga dito sa layout natin is yung transistor configurations and sizing. So, ito siya. Ito yung mga highlight ko. So, makikita natin dito na itong mga pins na to, ito yung pin configuration. Ito yung drain, gate, source, and bulk. And kung paano sila naging connected sa isa't isa. Then, sa right side, makikita natin kung anong klase siya ng CMOS. Kung PMOS or NMOS. Then, makikita din natin dito kung ano yung mga size niya and yung mga iba pa niyang characteristics. So, um, uh, hindi siya nasa-simulate sa WEDIT because wala siyang supply voltage. Other than that, hindi rin siya masimulate because hindi niya nare-read yung Morbin 20 na ating extractor. So, pag tinanggal naman natin yung Morbin 20, hindi pa rin siya nare-read because hindi na determine yung mga transistor. So, what we did is that we copied the most important part of this netlist, the transistor configurations and sizing, and paste it on the netlist ng SEDIT. So, makikita natin dito is layout, operational transconductance, amplifier, modified. So, makikita natin sa light library file na gumamit ako ng Tanner Edda version 14 because ito nga yung netlist ng SEDIT version 14. So, but familiar din sa inyo yung generic library, 0.25 library file natin na ginagamit natin kapag SEDIT ang ginaga ginagawa natin. So, ito na. Nireplace namin yung mga transistor configurations ng S-Edit and we put so we put the voltage source, sources and the current sources at the bottom so ang pinaka challenge talaga dito is yung pag analyze ng pin configurations at saka connections ng transistors kasi as you can see kanina hindi parehas yung paglilabel ng netlist ng S-Edit and L-Edit ng mga pins. So, nahirapan kaming nung una, 
na i-determine kung ano ba yung transistor kung nasaan ba siya sa ating schematic but luckily through trial and error we find it we determine the corresponding equivalence ng pagninim ng pin configuration ng sedit netlist sa ledit netlist so kaya nagkaroon kami ng knowledge kung ano yung ilalagay namin sa voltage source and current sources at kung ano yung plot natin sa waveform so para hindi na masyadong maba let's see kung kaparehas niya yung output waveform na nababas kanina sa SLE so medyo matagal lang siya ng konti ayan na so ayan so kaparehas na kaparehas niya so makikita natin na yung AC AC voltage natin that starts from 5 volts at saka yung 5 5 volts DC um, so there you have it we can therefore conclude na kahit hindi tayo gumamit ng LVS through, uh, through modification ng netlist ng layout we can conclude and we can differentiate the output net output waveform ng schematic net layout so thank you and God bless